All right, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel to plot multiple data points uh, on a graph. And then I'm also going to show you how to add uh, not just one se data series, but two data series. So if you have <clears throat> more than one subject uh, taking, uh, doing an experiment, you can put both of their data on the same uh, graph. Okay, so what I have here is I have subject number one. This is just data that we made up. This is from a, a blood pressure lab. And uh, this, right here, the subject number one um, is going to do push-ups. And they're going to start with 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20 push-ups. And over here, I have uh, this one that says BP1, BP2, and BP3. Uh, what this means is this is blood pressure trial number one, blood pressure trial number two, blood pressure trial number three. So whenever we are running an experiment, we always have to run multiple trials. And a lot of times, uh, kids will ask me, well, why do we have to do that? The computer is so accurate when it does it. Uh, the, the problem with that is that sometimes the computer will mess up and give you bad data. So uh, you, you really need to take more than one trial, uh, preferably three, uh, because sometimes the computer will go haywire, or if you're taking blood pressure or heart rate, uh, sometimes like a cell phone will interfere. So uh, it's very important to take three trials every time. So in this case, this is our first subject, and we're gonna be measuring mean pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you first how to take an average. So you're going to click here in this cell, the one that says E4, and you're going to type you're going to type in a command in Excel, and the command is going to be able to take the average for you. So you're going to write equals, and you're going to write the word average like this, okay? And then you're going to open a parentheses like this. Once you do this, it's going to it's looking for the cells that you want to average. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select the cells. I'm going to I'm going to start with zero push-ups. And this would be like our control. This would be like before you did any exercise. This is what we did. So you, the person was resting. So they measured it three times. And this is what we got. So B4 colon D4. What that's saying is it's going to take the average from uh, the cell B4. And colon means all the way across to D4. Then I'm going to close the parenthesis like this. And I'm going to hit enter. Okay. After you see that, you see that there's an average there. Uh, you may see, like when you when you get your data point, you may see that there's a large number of decimals there. For example, you may have seen a number with like a whole bunch of decimals. The way that you fix this is you right click, you go into Format Cells, you go into Number, and then you choose the decimal places down to one, so you can make it down to one here. Okay, um, you know, and and if you if you're doing a measurement like this, you know, if it's a normal data table, you would want to put the units here. So in this case, I'm putting millimeters of mercury. You, you kind of want to tell the person what you're doing. Uh, but, you know, we're going to put this on the graph. So now you have an average value here. It took these three. Now what I want to do is I want to I do what's called a fill function. Is I want to take whatever is in this cell and I want to drag it down. And I'm gonna, I want to copy all the commands down here. So you see this little uh, white cross moving around the screen. This is like the cursor. When I move it to the corner here, like this, you see it turns into like a little black across and if I click and drag the cells down you're gonna see that it basically reproduced this command all the way down so it took the average all the way down so if you look up here in the window you'll see the command but if you look in the cell you'll see the value so this is the average value of the three trials we did so we have now a value for zero push-ups five push-ups ten push-ups 15 push-ups 20 push-ups and the blood pressure right after so the next thing we want to do is we want to create a data table. So the first thing you need to do is you need to select the data that you want to put in the table. So you're going to go over here to push-ups and this is going to be your independent variable or the x-axis. So you want to hold, click the mouse, the left mouse, hold it down and select these cells. Now we also want to select the average blood pressure over here. So what you want to do now is hold down the control key and then click your mouse and drag it down too. So now I've selected uh, I've selected my independent variable and my dependent variable, or the x and the y axis. So the next thing you want to do is you want to go up here to the top where it says insert. You want to click this, okay? And this is going to, there's, there's an area here that says charts, okay? When you're dealing with science graphs, you want to stay away from columns, you want to stay away from line graphs, you want to stay away from pie charts or bar graphs. This is all for more like business or more simplistic presentations. Whenever we have data in a, a science chart, we always want to do a scatter just with the dots. Okay, we don't want to we don't want to like connect the dots. And I know a lot of people want to connect the dots, but we don't know what the, what shape the dots are going to make yet. 
Okay, so I'm going to click this right now, and what, what you see here, the chart appears, and I have a graph now, and there, there are these dots here. Now, the shape that they're making is a line, right? But we didn't know that. I mean, they could have made a curved shape. They could have made a, an exponential shape. They could have made, you know, a second-degree polynomial, a third-degree polynomial, a natural log, a log, all these different functions. But right now, we're just doing a simple function, right? So this is just a straight line, okay? So it's a pretty simple pretty simple relationship, okay? We have a linear relationship between push-ups and blood pressure, okay? Or at least on this time scale, it looks linear. Maybe it's not over time, but okay. All right, so right now, what I want to do next is I want to add, I want to add a trend line to this. In other words, I want to do a line of best fit. So this is a linear, this is, this, we're going to do a linear fit to this. So I'm going to go to this graph where you see these dots and I'm going to right click on the dots and we're going to go to format data series and I'm going to click that and we're going to go in, sorry, not format, we're going to go into, sorry, we're going to go to add trend line, add trend line, not format data series, add trend line and you see where it says linear right there we're going to select that okay and then we're going to go over here to line color and we're going to collect a, we're going to do solid line line style we're going to do 1.5 like that okay so that's the first thing we're going to do we've added a trend line now to our graph okay so now on this graph i have plotted my data points and i have a line here i did a best fit here okay so this video, I, can, I cannot go more than 15 minutes, so I'm going to have to speed up a little bit here. But let's say that you had another subject down here, and you want to create a subject 2. So I'm going to copy and paste that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in subject 2 here, and I'm going to change some of the data, just so we get a little bit different. So I'm like 89, 94, 96, 105, you know, 105. So I'm going to change all this data. Okay, so you can see here on the graph that I've changed the data, or not on the graph, on the data table here, I've changed all the data points here. So we have different average values now. Okay, so I just kind of made that up just in case we had a second subject that did the same test, right? So what I want to do now is I want to add this data, I want to add this data to the same graph. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go to uh, add, I'm going to go to add, sorry, select data, right there, select data, okay? And I'm going to click add and I'm going to type in for that. I'm going to type in a uh, subject two for that. And I have to select the X values. So I'm going to select the X values here over here on push ups. And I'm going to select the Y values here for average blood pressure. And I'm going to click here. And now I've selected the values. Uh, click OK. Now notice your first data series, it doesn't say subject one, it says series one, right? So let's go ahead and change the name of that. Let's, so go ahead and there and click edit. And let's just type subject one there. So you can clearly see now that we have both of these on here. Um, so now you can see that both of these points are here, but we want to put the, the line of best fit on that red graph. So let's right click that, add trend line, go to linear, line color. We want to do a solid line, make it red just so you can see it. I'm going to make it about 1.5 and so on. So now we have our two subjects there. You can see uh, we have the two lines and they're both kind of going in the same direction. And we can clearly see there's a relationship here now. There's an increase in blood pressure after we do uh, push-ups. Okay, so now I have two subjects here, right? And your graph, it's not always going to look this neat. And you're not always going to see a, a correlation that's good. But I just picked this data to make a point. Okay, so what's wrong with this graph? Well, there's a few things wrong with it. Uh, number one, I'd like to drag this over a little bit here to make the area a little bigger. And I'm going to move this uh, legend down here. Uh, but there's still some things wrong with it. We don't have a title and we don't have axes. So I'm going to go up here to Layout. I click the graph, I go up to Layout. I'm going to go to Chart Title, and I'm going to center one uh, above the here. And then I'm going to also, I need to add my axes. So I need to add one, the primary horizontal, and I need to add one that's the primary vertical. Okay, so now I have a title, and I have my, uh, my vertical and my horizontal title. Okay, so what would be an appropriate title for this graph? Well, Typically, we name the graph, uh, we name it the uh, dependent versus the independent variable. So the dependent variable here is blood pressure. And the independent variable is push-ups. And if this was like a science graph, you might say displacement versus time, where displacement is dependent, uh, time is independent. Okay, so blood pressure versus push-ups. Now let's go down here at the bottom. What am I going to call that? Push-ups. Right? 
and uh, here on this axis I'm going to call this blood pressure. Now something's really, we got to make sure that we put the units here, okay, because what kind of pressure are you measuring? Are you measuring PSIs? Are you measuring Pascals? Are you measuring millimeters of mercury? We are measuring millimeters of mercury, right, because this is a person and we measure a blood pressure in millimeters of mercury. How far up can the pressure push uh, mercury in a tube? So there you go. There's your graph. It looks pretty good, right? It looks pretty good. So we have this. I mean, you might want to just center things a little bit, but more or less, that's a pretty good looking graph. You could take this box here. You could right click there. You could format it. I could fill it. Solid fill. You go white. Okay, so there you go. That's not a bad looking graph. So now you've plotted multiple data series on a graph. Okay, so one last thing. So let's say you want to print this. Well, there's two ways you can print it. Uh, first way is you can click inside here, inside the spreadsheet. And if you go to print, okay, if you go up here to print and you go to preview, you're going to see the spreadsheet and you're going to see the graph, right? Okay, maybe you want to print that. Who knows? I don't know what you want to do. It's your graph. But a lot of times people just want to print the graph. So you can highlight the graph. If you just want to print the graph, you highlight the graph. You go up here to print and if I click preview you'll see the graph okay and you can do all kinds of things you can play with the margins and, and change things around in here but you, if, if you just want to print the graph that's what you can do or maybe you want to take this data and put it into Microsoft Excel so maybe you want to take this table and you want to give it some borders I don't know what you want to do it's really your it's really your experiment uh, millimeters of mercury if I want to go down here I'll hit alt enter and I could you know maybe do something like that whatever you can clean it up and I can just paste these into Microsoft Word also okay so let's say that I'm this is my lab report and I'm gonna open up my Word document so I could come here and I could take my data I can say subject one copy paste into Word just like that there it is come here copy this one copy paste into Word just like that and then I could take the graph and I could copy and I could paste the graph right into Word, just like that. Boom. So, you know, you can do all types of things with it, but, the, you know, when you're doing a graph and you're doing a report, you typically want to paste it into your Word document, and you can resize the graph here. You can make it, you know, smaller or larger, whatever you, whatever you want to do with it. It's fine. Uh, and you can wrap text around it and just do all kinds of things. But basically, that's a summary from start to finish of taking the data uh, for two different subjects, plotting them on the same graph, doing a scatter plot, fitting a best fit line, making a title, setting your axes, and then pasting them into words. It's really not that big of a deal, uh, and I hope that uh, this was clear to you and you can uh, recreate this graph on your own. All right, thanks for watching.